G'day folks, it's Rob here, and in today's clip we're just going to have a bit of a look at how I knocked together this little solids filter unit for mum and dad's chop and flip aquaponic system. Now a chop and flip is a basic aquaponic system, meaning that you have two main components, a fish tank with a pump in it and a grow bed up the top. Now one of the problems you have in this system is that the pump is actually down in the bottom in the fish tank itself. The water is being cycled up into the grow bed, from there it's flowing straight back down into the fish tank. As those solids that are produced in the fish tank get pushed through the pump, they get chopped up into fine particles. So it can be a bit of a challenge to try and remove them from the water stream. Now in our system at home, we have it configured differently. We have all the water and the solids coming from the fish tank to a filter before it reaches the sump where the water then enters the pump to be moved around. So we've got larger solids and they're a lot easier to take out. So this little DIY filter is based on something I saw on Paul's channel over on the Life in Thailand channel. There'll be a link down in the description below if you want to go check out his build. It's made from a recycled bucket, some shade cloth and some basing bits of plumbing. So we'll get to that in a tick. First, we'll go and have a bit of a look at some very easy ways you can use to filter out some of the solids if you just got a smaller system with a couple of fish in it. So just under the inlet into the grow bed here, you can see mum and dad have got one of these little scouring pads. Uh, they're just a, something you use to um, scrub the tough bits off your dishes. They're made of little hairs and what happens is the water runs over here and the solids get trapped in those little hairs. And once a day when mum comes out to feed the fish, all she needs to do is just bang it on the side of the tank and it knocks most of them off. And then once every week or two, they can just hit the actual pad itself with a um, jet from the, the garden hose and it'll blow out the majority of the rest of them. Now, it's not a foolproof way to keep solids out of your grow beds, but it does help to a degree. You can also get little squares of aquarium sponge filter. So popping something like that underneath the inlet would also help and do the same job. Probably might work a little bit better than these guys because they've got more voids in there to hold the solid. So that might be something you might want to consider using. So this is a little unit I made mum and dad and I thought I'd run through its construction first and then we'll look at another uh, very similar filter just with a slightly different pipe work. This one here to begin with I had to drill out a couple of holes so I drilled out a hole large enough to take a 20 mil or three quarter inch hose up the top there and around the front down the base I drilled a 44 millimeter hole or about an inch and three quarters I think to take a one inch uni seal and push the length of the 25 mil or one inch pipe through there. On the outside we have a 90 degree angle and on the inside we have another 90 degree angle which I attached a standpipe to and that standpipe takes the water from the top of the filter here and as you can see I also filled it up with a load of shade cloth and that's the uh, mechanical filtration part that collects all the solids. We'll actually clean this filter out and give you a bit of a closer look in a tick. Just a bit of information on some of the kit I'm using. I'm using the one inch uni seals because they're cheap. I, I also sell them, but they're just a, a one component jobby. You drill the hole to the right size. You can just push your pipe through. Just cuts down on costs a bit. Uh, the next one would uh, cheapest would have to be these one inch um, PVC fittings, male thread, female thread. Uh, drill a hole in the bucket and make sure it's very close to this thread here. Pop a washer in there, tighten it up and away you go. A bit of overkill in my book would be a, um, a bulkhead fitting in this situation. Would definitely do the job, but a little bit more expensive than the other two options there. Just keep in mind, I went with the 25mm pipe here, because under gravity you need a slightly larger bore pipe, uh, just to allow that water to flow through easily. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have some sort of blockage in there, and then for it to come back and overflow the filter. Now the other option is a little jobby like this unit here. Basically the same design except the outlet comes from the top so you only have one 90 degree elbow on the outside and on the inside we just have a little bit of pipe that would sit on top of the shade cloth and that takes the clean water out to the grow bed. So this little unit would work just as well on a stand or actually inside the grow bed itself for those folks who can't put it on stand uh, but I would have a nice long length of pipe on it to deliver the water closer to the grow bed so not a lot splashed around. If you do have enough space to put a little stand beside the grow bed, you can take that little pipe off and you can actually sit it so it just sits just over the lip and that way it just has a little bit of a lower profile and it doesn't stand out as much. But the basic um, hose plumbing is going to be the same for the pair of them. Now the reason I created this one with a stand pipe on the inside was I just think it looks a little bit better. So what we might do is we'll just trace the plumbing into the unit. What we've got is a pump down in the fish tank underneath mum's carrots. It's a fairly oversized pump, 
So I've actually got it split off underneath in the sump tank to relieve some of the pressure and aerate the water. But the main line here is a 25mm line and it comes out to a nut and tail assembly which is held on with some um, hose clamps because it is under pressure. On the other side of the nut and tail assembly we have a 20mm or 3 quarter inch line that goes up to a valve with hose clamps on either side and up to another nut and tail assembly. The reason I've installed that second one on top of the valve is so we can unscrew it just so we can um, basically remove the whole unit to take it down to the grass to give it a bit of a clean out. Now the 20 mil line, the reason I've used it is it's a little bit more flexible than the one inch. This stuff here is pretty stiff. This 20 mil line is a little bit more flexible. So it means I can run it down the side of the tank here, around the base, and have it end on the opposite corner. And then I just packed a whole load of shade cloth in on top of that, just some scraps I had laying around the yard. One thing I have done with the hose pipe coming in, I've made a hole just in the top there using some scissors. And what that will do is that will prevent a siphon occurring if the power ever goes out and the pump is turned off. Because if that were to happen, all the solids collected down the bottom of the filter there would be drawn back up through that hose and then down into the fish tank itself. So we don't want that occurring. So that little hole just allows air to come in to um, stop the siphon from initiating. Just to give you a bit of a look at these little um, spots around the side of the drum here, what they are is midge fly. So they've set up a little bit of a colony in here. I dare say we'll see some of the larval um, form down the bottom when we clean the filter out. But just to give you a bit of a look at the water, it's coming through very clean. Uh, so what we might do is, I might um, turn off the valve there, disconnect the nut and tail fitting, and then take the filter down to the lawn to give a bit of a clean out. So just quickly before we clean this little jobby out, um, I do have a clip on the complete build of one of these little chop and flip systems. So you can check that out in that little link up there. Also too, if this is the first time you've been to our channel and you're into aquaponics, you can click on that little subscribe button down there and check the little bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent notifications whenever I upload clips uh, like this one or others on um, aquaponics or backyard or indeed front yard farming to the channel. You can come along and say good day. So I'll just turn the valve off here and then undo the nut and tail and away we go. Oh, by the way, the pump's still running. Uh, that little split line in the sump tank will um, take any of the extra flow. We can take this over to the lawn for a bit of a clean out. So as you can see, you probably make out the water is still very clear there. Um, not too bad at all. Start pulling this stuff out though. And it's a different kettle of fish. So it gets mucky very quick. There's three lots of shade cloth in there. Just to give you a bit of a closer look at some of the suspended solids down there in the water to give you some idea on how much solid particulate that it does remove from the water flow. So I'll go and pour this on the turmeric underneath the frangipani then come back and show you all the little um, larvae down in the base. So there you go folks, you can probably make out all the midge fly larvae down the base there. There's just some of the solids floating around. So I'll clean this out with a hose, wash off the shade cloth and then we'll put it all back together. So to put this all back together what I've been doing is um, just making sure for a start that that little air hole is um, away from the edge so no water runs out there. Connect it back to the main line with the bulkhead fitting. Now putting in the first layer of shade cloth. There we go. And the second which is a slightly denser shade cloth. I mean you could use whatever you had laying around. I think mine is a um, 30 down the bottom then a 50. And then at the top here we have a 90% um, shade cloth, I think. You can also use a different um, aquarium grade filter mattings. There's a few different ones on the market. Do the same job. So just make sure that the uh, nut and tail's on, the hole's up. And we're pretty much all right to go. Now there might be a little bit of muck come through to begin with because there might have been some settling in the line. And uh, not only that, um, they may not have got all the um, little blooming midge fly out of this. They're a bit of a bit hard to um, hit off with the hose so it'll take us a few minutes but we'll slowly get some water coming up the top here so there we go we're starting to get some water to come up the top there and it looks fairly clean there's a few little black dots so now all I need to do is just play around with the flow rate to make sure it's not running too fast and we can get the bell siphon to initiate and then break when need be Let's say around about there is right. 
and then we can just pop the lid on and away we go. For you folks who want a little bit finer grade filtration, you can purchase this sort of filter material, like, as I mentioned before. We use this in our fish farm uh, when it was up and running, three different grades of that. All you'd need to do is cut it out in a square shape like our drum there, or in a circular shape and just slide that in there. Probably four or five layers and that would be enough to capture most of the solids. Maybe a finishing layer of this would actually make that run a little bit cleaner. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it at this point in time. So you will find that small solids will make it through and eventually, be it two or five or seven years down the line, you may end up with a situation where the solids are causing a problem in the grow beds and they need to be cleaned out. What I'd suggest you do is every time you've um, finished harvesting one load of fish and you're getting it ready to restock with some more fingerlings, maybe uh, flood the grow bed, leaving the standpipe in with um, some water swish the, the media around there, and then on the uh, drain pipe, have it run out to the garden via a hose or something, and just evacuate uh, all the dirty, mucky water that comes out. That may help, um, you know, lengthen out the period before you have to get in there and remove all the media, hose it out and start again. So just a little bit of a word of advice there. So there's a few different takes on these easy little DIY filters. Thank you again, Paul, for posting the original clip. If you folks are after some more aquaponic DIY clips, you can find it in a um, DIY playlist I've got. There'll be a thumbnail at the end of the clip you can click on, and also a link down in the description below if you can't wait that long. Before I go, I really do need to send out a huge thank you and g'day to all the marvellous folks who are helping to support our channel through the Patreon website. You can check out our Super Contributors links down in the description below. So pop on down, click on the links and show them some love. For you folks who are in the markets for either root pouches or a few bits of aquaponic gear like the uni seals or venturis, I do sell them through our website, so I'll pop a link at the end as well. And there'll also be some affiliate stores that you might want to check out. On that page, you'll also find my Amazon influencer link for you folks over in the States. I've got some aquaponic gear listed there, testing equipment, uni seals and root pouches. The heavens are just about to open up, so I suppose I should put the camera away. I do hope you're all well and happy and that your own aquaponics or gardens are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers folks and have a tough one.